Hey boys, Bradley here from Love the Grind here. Today I want to talk a little bit about protein or more specifically amino acids and the effect they have on the body. I'll be focusing on two amino acids here, one that raises stress and the other one that lowers it. All the things I'll talk about in this video I have experimented with and I have felt the results both bad and good so I can definitely attest to this. There will be a lot of studies and references and you can check that out and reach your own conclusions. So let's start off by giving a little context. What exactly is protein? Well, at its core, protein is a nutrient that contains various amino acids. Amino acids are essential for any living organism to function properly, and there are many different types that all have different hormone-like functions when in the bloodstream. Let's go over the main two that I want to discuss in this video. Glycine and tryptophan. Glycine is an amino acid that provides protection to the cells in your body from harmful chemicals or substances. It also helps break down energy like glycogen or fat for the cells to use. This means that it helps support the immune, nervous and digestive systems in operating correctly and staying healthy. It would probably be easier to list the things that glycine doesn't help as it pretty much improves every aspect of your body. Sleep quality, mental performance and memory, stress and anxiety, blood sugar and fatigue levels are just some of the things glycine helps improve. There are muscle building and anti-aging effects as well as its ability to lower serotonin levels. To get more glycine in your diet, you're going to want to eat things that contain a very high amount of it like gelatin, bone broth and offal. Vegetable sources, while not as high, include spinach, kale, cabbage or pumpkin. You can also get it from fruits like bananas. So on the other end of the spectrum we have tryptophan. Now tryptophan is an amino acid that acts as a precursor to serotonin. This means that when it reaches your brain, there is a chemical reaction and serotonin is made and released into your body. An excess of serotonin produces a broad range of harmful effects. Cancer, inflammation, fibrosis, neurological damage, shock and hypertension. For example, increased serotonin impairs learning, while things that decrease serotonin, like glycine for example, improves learning. During stress when our glycogen stores are empty, cortisol breaks down fat for energy, but also breaks down muscle tissue to get the amino acids it needs that it can't get from fat. Through this process of converting our lean mass into amino acids, two amino acids in particular are created in large amounts, those being tryptophan and cysteine. These two amino acids have been shown to have thyroid suppressing effects, meaning they slow down your metabolism and eventually become toxic. In a hypothyroid or slow metabolic state, your body is unable to digest the amino acids efficiently, forcing your body to create more and more cortisol to extract those amino acids that it's not getting from your lean muscle mass. Now one of the main amino acids in your muscle tissue is tryptophan, and remember, Tryptophan is a precursor for serotonin, so when cortisol extracts it from the muscle tissue, it turns into serotonin and lowers your metabolic rate, forcing more cortisol to be produced and more tryptophan to be extracted from the muscle. So if you have a diet very high in tryptophan, it's going to produce more serotonin, which is going to produce more cortisol, which is going to extract more tryptophan from your muscles and just engage in this stress cycle that's never going to end unless you give yourself something to break up that cycle of stress. So ideally, when consuming foods high in tryptophan, you're going to want to balance it out with another amino acid like glycine, which lowers the serotonin and balances out the hormones, preventing that cycle of stress. Foods high in tryptophan include whey protein, chicken, egg whites, peanuts, and mostly in animal proteins in general. Foods like milk can be drunk even though they contain a high tryptophan because they also contain significant levels of calcium, which converts tryptophan into niacin, negating its serotonin producing effects. You could say then that maintaining a healthy level of calcium is a way to avoid the bad effects of tryptophan while still eating foods high in it. But preferably, if you consume gelatin, which has a high amount of glycine in it, while eating high tryptophan foods, it will balance out the amino acid profile in your bloodstream, usually resulting in less serotonin production and in halting that cycle of stress. I would personally recommend supplementing with gelatin or gelatin rich foods as they have a very low tryptophan content, but a very good range of amino acids, including glycine. 
Milk and cheese is also a great protein source and has the right calcium balance to stop the tryptophan content from causing too much harm. The degenerative and inflammatory diseases can often be corrected by the use of gelatin rich foods as it does not contain many stress inducing amino acids but contains large amounts of the healing and protective ones in it like glycine. In today's society, the consumption of gelatin has decreased greatly compared to the amount of foods we eat that contain a high amount of the stress inducing amino acids like tryptophan and cysteine. This is because we have moved away from using the whole animal as food and just to eating lean cuts of meat which contains high tryptophan while ignoring all the offal and the bones that contain all the, the amino acids that balance out that lean muscle tissue tryptophan. I just wanted to give a very basic overview of the reasons how gelatin or glycine supplementation through foods or powdered form can increase your health and lower your stress by giving you more of the amino acids that you need while limiting the ones you don't, creating a nice balance in your body. Now, the most prominent effects I've found, especially within the first two days, would be decreased inflammation, reduced anxiety, and more range of motion. I definitely suggest you give this a shot, guys. Gelatin supplementation is nothing new, and in fact, it's something that's very, very old, but we've just forgotten about it as society's moved forward and developed new ways of thinking, which for better or for worse, I'll leave that up to you. But that's all I have to say today, guys. Hopefully you learned something. Post in the comments section below if you tried this out and what your results were. I'd love to hear it. As always, together we can become something more than we ever thought we could be. I'm Brett Leggett and I'm out. I'll see you guys next time. All systems of the body are harmed by excess of these fats, but the main issues to focus on here and what we're going to talk about are the hormonal imbalances, which is